Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Amin and if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. That would help my channel out quite a bit. Today we do a quick intro uh, from the couch because I'm playing around with a new GoPro and some of the footage didn't turn out the way I wanted. So just reshooting the intro real quick and no worries, we will get to the garage in just a second. Just a quick summary, what is this video about? This video is about changing your brake pads and doing some maintenance and cleaning of your brake calipers, the front calipers that is. The calipers changed quite a bit from the previous generation S1000s to the 2020 generation. The brakes are now manufactured by Hayes, American company, and they work slightly different than the Brembo's. So I thought I have to change my brake pads anyway. Let's make a quick video of that walk you through how you can clean, maintain and change the brake pads. I hope this video helps you. Leave a like or comments below. I'm always looking forward to any feedback and especially when you have tricks and tips on how to improve this job, let me know. I'm always uh, happy to chat with you. Whenever I prepare for a job, I look around the internet and I've not seen any videos for the 2020 S1000 double R model from BMW. So that's why I put this video together. Like I said, I hope it's helpful to you. And without further ado, let's teleport to the garage and get the job done. All right, what do you need for this job? So you need two packs of these. That's the number, if you wanna look them up. They run roughly for $90, I think, a piece, probably depending on your local sales tax. Uh, you need two, right? This is a set of two, so it is, you, this will get you through one caliper, but you need for two calipers in the front, two packs. Uh, you probably want to have some sort of uh, flathead screwdriver or something similar that can be really helpful. You're dealing with dirt, so some good shop towels will help. Then you will need, you will need a size six socket. And for the calipers, you will need a size, a size 13 socket. So these two to remove the calipers. And one of the things that you don't see very often in videos like this, uh, you will need a used toothbrush. The softer, the better. Uh, you want to have this really soft because all you need to uh, use this for is to get the brake dust out of the caliper. And to make it really squeaky clean, uh, get yourself some uh, brake cleaner. This one works really awesome. And for uh, this one and other items, I'll put a link in the description below. All right, this is all you need. The biggest wear item is these guys, right? They uh, run you for a set um, in California for roughly $200. But if you are um, track riding, uh, very hard track riding that is, uh, you will probably get, depending on your riding style and how much uh, you use the brakes and what track you're on, uh, I got 12 days out of a set of these. Um, and then they were toast. If you do street riding, you probably get a couple of thousand miles, uh, I would guess five, eight thousand miles easily out of a set of these. My bike only has 2,500 miles on it, so there was some street miles and a lot of track miles which just wears out the stuff very quickly. All right, let's get to it. So here you have your brake caliper and you can see there's a lot of brake dust on it. One thing I really observed with these brake pads is they produce a lot of brake dust. And especially when you have the M version like me, uh, you will see a lot of brake dust on your rim. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing, just like some pads produce more dust, some do less, these ones will cover everything just after a short ride on a track, like one session, everything is covered in dust. Brake dust is highly abrasive, right? So if you clean your carbon fiber bits, your rims, keep that in mind to uh, use light pressure so you don't scratch up everything. Here, once we get them out of the pack, I wanna show you, this is a set of the new brake pads. And I already did the other side, the other caliper. And these are the used brake pads. So you can see, definitely got a little bit of heat treatment, but the biggest difference is when you put them next to each other and you compare, let me get my finger out of the way, you compare the thickness. So you can see how much the pads were worn. And 
this is definitely time to replace them. So very, very well worn pots. What I want to show you about the wear and tear also is, I hope you can see that on the video. Um, this one is almost on the wear marker, it's very, very worn. Uh, and here's a little bit more left. Whereas on the other pad, the grooves are still a little bit bigger. There's still some, some more meat left. Um, and so when we put them especially next to each other, it's probably very hard to uh, see that on the camera, but there's a little bit of uneven wear. Especially on this pad, the one that's more worn, you can see that there's a little bit more brake pad material left on this side, on this side, and there's less left on this side. If you put a screwdriver in comparison, here it's almost a full screwdriver, and here it's definitely less than one, almost half. So more, more wear on this side and on this side, which is really interesting. I think, and this is just a theory, if anyone knows better, please comment below. Um, in the calipers, um, from the uh, brake fluid that enters here, there's first a chamber here on the top that moves the upper uh, piston, and we will see them once I get it off, uh, onto the brake disc. And then only once this one applies some pressure, we move the second piston that's further down uh, because this is connected to one chamber. So you'd always have pressure first on one side and then on the other side. And that would then result into like an uneven uh, wear. But I think what it also does is that's why these calipers have such a good feel. Because instead of having all four pistons hitting uh, the pads and the rotor at the same time, I think it really starts pressuring uh, in the front first. And then when you uh, issue more pressure, the, the uh, second caliper, uh, sorry, the second cylinder presses on as well from the back and bites, and you have the full brake pressure. So really good feel on the finger uh, that you can get very solid uh, control braking, but you will get a little bit of uneven uh, brake pad use like this. Uh, so you will wear through them a little bit faster, and that's something to consider. Overall, I'm very happy, but I had to bike many days on a, a racetrack and I really like the stopping power and the feel of these pads. That's why I got new ones and then change. But what you can see is I have this fancy guy here, which is an air duct to get more air onto the caliper to keep it cooler. Um, if you have not seen yet, I have a separate video uh, for this one and I will link it also in the description below. So if you're interested in keeping your brakes cooler for a lot of racetrack usage, have a look at this. But now I talked about enough, let's get the caliper out, have a look at the brake pads and clean this thing up. Get the bolts out. And these ones are color coded. You see maybe there's a little red dot here which aligns with the markings here. So I like to keep them separate. So I know this one is the lower bolt and this one's the upper one. So I can put them into the same spots again. Then all you have to do is just wiggle the caliper off. And if you press against the rotor, you can squeeze the pads a little bit uh, aside. And then here you have the caliper. You can see it's covered in brake dust. And if you have this, you just take uh, off and put it to the side so you don't step on it. It's also a great chance to clean this one, especially from the inside. It's uh, dirty with brake dust. Let's put it aside and clean it. This bike has steel braided lines, so in theory it's okay to just let everything hang. But what I like to do is get a, a little bungee and you can, into here this holes, just hang the bungee cord and then I hang it from the brake lever. So the nice thing is now, let me, let me lift you up a little bit, the caliper just hangs here suspended on the bungee cord and then you can work on it much better. Also, if you leave it for a long time, it's nice to know uh, that it's suspended and not maybe getting some air into the brake system. All right, I'm just putting the bolts quickly in so we remember which one is which. All right, one precaution that I like to do is just cover everything up because right, we're gonna use some of the brake cleaner. That stuff is uh, right, uh, alcohol, so you don't want to get in the wrong parts, just cover it up and you will have less cleaning to do. These high calipers are a little bit different. You have two pins here. On the back side, we have two safety pins or some, some little safety uh, 
well, clips. So we have to remove them, and then you use the nine millimeter here in the front to loosen them up, and then you can remove this. Um, so you would have to do that, and then the pads come out after that. All right, so let's use the flathead screwdriver, get the safety pins out. It's a little bit hard to film, but you just go in there, and then with a little move of the screwdriver, they just come out. They look like these guys, they're very small. Make sure you don't lose them. Just remove them on both sides. Easy like that. And then you just have the pins free. So you just go back to the other side, get your little nine millimeter out. And then loosen up the safety boards. And you just pull it out. Once both pins are removed, the pads will just fall out. Let's suspend this guy. So this side, this caliper was actually replaced by BMW because it was uh, weeping. So these pads are a little bit newer than on the other side and they have a little bit more uh, meat left on them. And on that side, it's so pretty even on this pad. A little bit less than a screwdriver and definitely a little bit less there. So a little bit uneven wear, more, more wear on this side again. So it seems to be on both calipers that they, on the forward one, put first more pressure and then the rear one gets a little bit less pressure. Keep these pads. You might use them right if you have an emergency, if you're aware out of some or so, you can always use them. And then have a look at the, the safety bolts so this one was a little bit hard to remove and it's a little bit scratched up actually so I'm gonna clean this one a little bit um, some people even put like some anti-seize on there just like be really careful with that because if you get anything on the brake pads right you might have catastrophic results so because if they are looped the brake pads can move more freely and don't get potentially stuck um, but I like to put not anything on there, it's safer for me. So safety first. Other pin also very interesting. You can see here there's like some usage. I don't know how good that shows up on the camera, but like where where the pads were sliding back and forth, it uh, corroded the the coating coating of this uh, anodized uh, bolt a little bit. So yeah, nothing too concerned of, but. A little bit wear and tear after one year already, so not the best quality, but it does its job. Now we can have a good look into the caliper. So here we have the four pistons that press onto um, the brake pads. This side is actually much cleaner, which is interesting. So this one was the caliper that was replaced. The other one produced even more brake dust and was much filth filthier. Uh, than this one uh, but anyway we have a safety clip here what you do is really just like press it gently and then it comes off just take it out without scratching anything and it looks like this so you see there's like, these two clips two clips that are holding things in place and then for uh, instructions like the pointy side goes towards the up side just like like an arrow up so you know what orientation this was in all it does is it keeps some pressure on the brake pads uh, so uh, they are in the right position. Now we're gonna move these cylinders around a little bit, right? You can just press on them with a finger, and they will slide in. If you use right now the brake lever, be careful; these come out. And if you push it too far, these cylinders might touch each other, and then it's really hard to separate them. Or if you push too far, they might even fall out, and you have to do a rebuild of the entire caliper. So we don't want that. Whenever you press these. Uh, cylinders back in. Make sure in the top brake reservoir that you have enough room. It's uh, very simple. You can just look at it and uh, open it up. Uh, and if it's too full to the brim, just remove a little bit of brake fluid. I made sure that I have a little bit of room. So what you can then do is you just use your fingers and press this guy in. You see this one came in out a little bit and like by moving them, they move a little bit 
slowly, like they're a little bit stuck. But cleaning them, you can remove some of the brake dust and make sure that they move freely again. And if they move freely, of course, you will have a uh, better brake feel. Uh, you don't want to get these cylinders stuck. So, if you would be puristic, you could throw in a new brake pads and you're done. I want to go a little bit deeper and give them a proper cleaning. As we're now going to use some brake cleaner, I'm going to hold this behind the caliper so we don't make a huge mess everywhere. And now with the brake cleaner, just be liberal. Try to first figure out like the pressure. Ooh, this is too much. And then just square it in there. You're not doing any damage or so, but you can see here the black stuff coming out. That's like all the brake dust. This of course smells very strong alcohol. That's why I'm also wearing gloves. So better if you don't get that on your skin, but it's not the end of the world. And then get out your old toothbrush and then get the light in there and you can really remove the old gunk. Right, go around the, the pistons and you get that old stuff out. This one is not too bad. Really, funnily enough, the other caliper was much, much, much more dirty. And also, once you have the, the backing plate or this little pressure plate removed, you can get the toothbrush from the backside in. And then just really liberally, without any pressure, right? Like, there are seals in, around the pistons, so you don't want to get in there and maybe damage any seals with the toothbrush. So very gentle, just, right, your, your goal is to get the brake dust off. Make sure like that the sides of the pistons are clean, but you don't want to have a big crust of just brake dust sitting there that might cause you problems. Yeah, rotate the thing and then go from all directions in there, right from the back, and then clean until you are satisfied with the outcome. All right, once you have scrubbed everything down, use some more brake cleaner to just like flush all the gunk out, well, brake dust, mostly brake dust at least. You can also wipe down this. The good thing is, where it was alcohol, it evaporates really quickly, so you won't have any water, any residue, anything that could do any harm to uh, the corrosion, anything like that. Also while we add it here, we'll just clean the side, make it look good, just like generously make it wet, and then rub off all the gunk. So you have a sharp looking caliper again. Okay. Now that I'm reasonably happy with like how much of the brake dust I really got out, you can use the brake lever to get some of these cylinders out. You don't have to do this, um, but the nice thing is you can see how freely they move, but do this really slowly. So we can see the first one here down there was moving and then actually the second one comes out, which is really interesting. So be careful to not do it too far. And you can then also see, right, how do the sides look like? Um, these ones are still a little bit dirty. So clean the sides of the cylinders when they come out a little bit. Make sure that they don't come out too far, right? Just press them back in and then clean one at a time. Little pro tip, if you want, for example, later on the, the rear ones to come out, you can, right, just like with gentle pressure on the fingers, press them back in. I will press the fluid back up. And you can use a soft screwdriver like this. And once you make enough room here in the cylinder, uh, sorry, in the caliper, you just put this guy in between, like so. And now if we use the brake cylinder, uh, the, the brake, you see this guy comes out. It was before not moving. So now you have access to these guys, clean them, and then press them back in, clean the front, and you're good to go. So I will just do this, and so you don't have to sit through me cleaning it all. I will accelerate this, but you can see right like here is like this gunk on the side of the um, pistons. So you want to clean that up so the side walls are nice and clean. They don't stick and they move freely 
um, so you have great break fear. Let's use some movie magic and just get it done. Snap! All right, now you can now see they are nice and shiny. So all you need to do is use your fingers and press them gently to the other direction again. Just give it time. I right? don't do it with force, right? Because the cylinders might move. You don't want to do, do, uh, damage any seals. So just move them gently. It's like equal pressure. Make sure that they move freely. But right? if you feel any catching or anything weirdness, then you might want to clean a little bit more. Alrighty. Now that all the pistons are nice and shiny again. Well, Mostly, it's a little bit dirt left, but uh, be your own judge of how, how clean you want to have that. You can press the, cylinder, uh, the pistons in right, with gentle pressure, but again, make sure you have enough room in the top reservoir. And also feel for like I said, anything moving finally. The reason right, you want to press them all the way back in is you need some room to reinstall the new brake pads. So let's do that. First off, make sure that you give also this guy a little bit of a clean um, pointy side up. Just like get it through there. And then you push it into the top. And it's really just like a simple clip. Just like align it and then it just snaps in like so. So if, it, if you have to force it, you're doing it wrong, right? just make sure it fits perfectly into the groove and it should fit in very, very, very smoothly. And then, most important part, the copper side goes to the outside, right? And the silver is the brake material, so that goes obviously to the inside. So you just, you can slide them in, right? We have enough room. And the reason, right, you press in those cylinders uh, or pistons is where you need the room to actually uh, get these pads in and then also make them fit around the brake rotor which you will see in just a bit. Okay, so just position them roughly and then get your first safety clip in. In order to get them through you need to press a little bit against the silver uh, plate that uh, we just had a look at. And when you press that down a little bit, then the pin just slides in. Okay. Pin number one is in. Get number two. Line it up. Press the brake pad a little bit down. Through the first one. And then press on the second brake pad. And you can feel, that's a bit hard to show, that the pins go through. Just get your little ratchet out. Make sure right, that this of course goes through and doesn't press onto the pad. Same with the second one. And right now, just make it hand tight because we still need to install the, the safety pins, uh, safety clips before you're good to go. Right now, right, make sure that you have enough room here. You see it's like a little bit tight to get the rotor around there, so we'll move them around a little bit. And also on the other side, that's where a flathead screwdriver comes in handy. You can just press against the top of the plates to just like make sure they're evenly seated like so. This looks better, right? Uh, there's now enough room for us to get a rotor in. Rotate this puppy around and get those clips on. So this is now a little bit tedious. Okay, got the gloves off for this one. All right, get your safety clips. <laughs> then you see there's a little groove that's where you want to align the clip with. And you can just press it on with your hand. Just use a screwdriver after to just make sure that these are firmly in place. 
right? This is really just double safety so that the pins don't come out. Because if the pins come out, your brake pads could just fall off and that's not good. So double check your work. I like to rotate them uh, so they face the other way around. So you can clearly see, ah, this one was loose. So by rotating, I found out it was loose and didn't lose it. This time I made a nice little sound and now it's properly on. So yeah, you can see number one, number two, both are on. And also when they are like this around, you can use the screwdriver and lever it against. But this way you know it's tight. With these installed, make sure the pins are snug. Don't over torque them. All right, they have a safety pin. but you definitely don't want to have them come up. Okay, just before you continue, make sure the brake pads can move freely. That all feels good. All right, so you're gonna spread them and now put them back on. Get your bolts out. I will just put them aside. Let's see if there's enough space and we can get the uh, caliper back on. <clears throat> In this case, it's still a little bit tight. So what you wanna do is just use your fingers, press those pads a little bit aside, so you have a little bit more room. Keep a finger there to keep them spread open. And now it fits. And just pull out one bolt at a time. Get this over. Make sure the bolt is in. All right, side it back in. And then just use your fingers to get the bolts very finger, finger tight. One important thing now is that you get now a proper fit of the new brake pads on the rotor. Like, first of all, can the uh, wheel move? And, let's remove this. You wanna make sure, first give like the, the brake lever a couple of pumps. The wheel should be able to complete like one, at least half uh, rotation. If it stops right away, that's probably too tight. And then give it a spin, use the brakes, give it a spin, use the brakes until it feels good. And here's now a trick. Keep pressure on the brakes. And then tighten down. This gives really the brake pads and the caliper chance to really seat itself into the right spot. Now I'm again holding it and now I'm Talking it down. Here I recommend to take out your torque wrench. I'm going visually. I have the little colored dots here so I know on what torque setting it was before and I just torque it down to the same spot. Um, don't do what I do. I would recommend to get out a torque wrench and set it to the proper torque spec of this bike. All right, and that completes the install. You have swapped your brake pads, you cleaned the caliper so that the pistons can move freely again. And also while doing that, right, you see if the pistons have any sign of wear and tear, scratches, uh, leaks, uh, right? None of that should be existing. If you see anything that seems out of the ordinary, contact your local dealer and get it uh, figured out. I cannot stress it enough, the front brakes are probably the most important system of your bike and double, triple check everything, torque down the bolts to spec, make sure you have no leaks suddenly, right? maybe um, you twisted the, the brake lines or so, 
right? Make sure that everything stays dry, uh, that you have a uh, brake lever feel, right? Like try your, your brakes. Uh, does that feel right? Spin the wheel, um, right? Does the wheel get stuck? Uh, and then once you have done all these tests, go for a little test ride. But like, keep in mind that your brake pads are new. You need to get them uh, set in anyway first. Once they're completely new, they need a couple of uh, brake cycles until they feel as good as the previous ones again. Because they are new to the rotor, they need to bat them. Uh, they need to bat themselves in. So go for a slow ride just around your garage. Right, use a little bit of brake and then start using more brake so you can put a brake in the brake pads properly. Make sure everything feels good, and after your test ride, after your short test ride, double check again. Right? Did anything loosen up? Any any screws came out? Any leaks? Um, and if not, you're good, and and you have uh, working brakes. So, again, just being super careful. Nobody wants to have their front brakes failing. That would be a disaster. Anyway, that wraps up about uh, the video. I hope this was useful to you. Again, if you want to see more videos about the S1000RR and all the changes that I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would help me out a lot and, and leave a like or comment um, and tell me what you think about the video. Anyway, that was all for today. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.